Hey friends, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So yesterday I gave you the alliteration of the tricky tactics of the tempter. We went over the first few verses of Matthew chapter 4 and showed you how Satan works on you and I. Now today I want to take those same verses, but I want to show you how Jesus responds to the temptations of the tempter. I like to call these, in the same uh, pattern of alliteration, doctrinal defense dealing with dismissing the devil. <laughs> so you've got these same verses, but I want to show you how Jesus handles those temptations. So in verse number one, it talks about how Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be with God, all right? And he's fasting. So strength to resist often comes from prayer, fasting, and being in places where you know that God's Spirit will be. I love that because you go to places to prepare yourself properly. Jesus is preparing himself for his ministry. Ministry. So he prepares himself so that strength comes by being in the places that you are supposed to be to prepare yourself properly. Now we talked yesterday about how Satan comes after those three things. He comes after your ego, he comes after your uh, physical appetite, and he goes after your desire to become more of the things of the world, right? And I love how Jesus responds to each one of those things. You see the response in verse number four. He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he's quoting from scripture back in the Old Testament. In response to this, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Verse number seven, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when Satan says, all these things I'm going to give you, verse 10, Jesus says, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. There is power in those three words, it is written. When we recall and apply the truths taught in the scriptures, we can resist the devil's temptations. Now, there's some great verses that I have attached to that phrase, it is written. One of the references you can go to is Helam in chapter 3, verses 29 and 30, where it talks about whosoever lays hold upon the word of God, which is quick and powerful, it's going to divide asunder all of the cunning and the snares and the wiles of the devil and lead the man of Christ to the straight and narrow course across the everlasting gulf of misery, which is prepared to engulf the wicked. So using that word of God, you're laying hold upon the word of God. Another is 1 Nephi chapter 15, verse 24. I said unto them, it's the word of God. When Nephi's brothers were asking him, what's this rod of iron you've been talking about? It's the word of God. Whoso would hearken unto the word of God would hold fast to it. They would never perish. Neither could the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them to blindness and lead them away to destruction. You got another one over in Alma 31 where it talks about the preaching of the word had a great tendency to lead the people to do that which was just and it had a more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword. So Alma thought it was expedient to try the virtue of the word of God. So Jesus knew how how to use the Word of God in a way that it helped combat the adversary. Now, it's also important to understand that Satan understands Scripture, but he doesn't apply it. That verse number six where he said, oh, well, if you be the Son of God, it is written, he'll give his angels charge to bear you up, right? Satan knows Scriptures, but he doesn't know how to apply those things. So one of the things I would recommend with this, it is vitally important, and I really have a testimony of this, for us to have a group of Scriptures that we can use to defend ourselves when Satan attacks us. In my scriptures, I've created this tag called scriptures that'll get me through anything. So you can go to some of these verses of scripture, some of these power verses, and they can help you when you start feeling tempted or you start feeling doubt. One of the reasons we have a sock company is I will put scriptures on these socks for people. It's kind of the same concept. I'll put scriptures like Helaman 512 or Doctrine and Covenants section 6 verse 36 or phrases like be of good cheer or armor up things like that there. These are things that actually can help you combat the adversary when you feel discouraged, when you feel frustrated, when you feel down, if there's any kind of temptation. That's why scriptures can help you. So I love this idea of creating a tag in your scriptures of scriptures that'll get you through anything. So now another thing to remember, you go to verse number 11 of Matthew chapter four, and it says, then the devil leaveth him. 
I love that. And behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. We'll talk more about that verse tomorrow. Now, it's also important to understand with that, you go over to Luke chapter 4, which is part of the Come Follow Me for this week as well. You go to verse number 13, and it says, When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. That's one of the things to understand is resisting is going to cause Satan to depart, but only for a season, right? You can cast him out but he will continue to come at you in various ways until you are safely dead on the other side of the veil. But he's gonna still keep coming at you. So that's an important thing to understand is you cast him out, you keep being vigilant. Now, one thing to also understand about these verses is Jesus understands what real temptation is but he never gave in. There's some great references in the Come Follow Me for the book of Hebrews, uh, in Alma chapter seven, which is one of the most phenomenal verses out there where it talks about because Jesus overcame these temptations, he knows how to help other people out. There's a great quote from C.S. Lewis that I love that talks about the way Jesus handled temptation. He said, no man knows how bad he is until he has tried very hard to be good. A silly idea is current that good people do not know what temptation means. This is an obvious lie. Only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. After all, you find out the strength of an army by fighting against it, not by giving in. You find out the strength of a wind by trying to walk against it, not by laying down. A man who gives in to temptation after five minutes simply does not know what it would have been like an hour later. That is why bad people in one sense know very little about badness. They have lived a sheltered life by always giving in. We never find out the strength of the evil impulse inside us until we try to fight it. And Christ, because he was the only man who never yielded to temptation, is also the only man who knows to the full what temptation means. The only complete realist. So I love this example just in these first, again, this first little part of Matthew chapter 4 and you get into Luke chapter chapter four as well with this. Not only does it show us the tricky tactics of the tempter, but it shows us the doctrinal defenses dealing with dismissing the devil. And I love these verses and how it helps me understand how I can grow closer to Jesus Christ and what I can learn from him when I am tempted by Satan. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks so much for sharing these messages. As always, we're so grateful that you do that. Go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.